Listen, I have a younger brother in California. He just had a baby 20 minutes ago. Would you do me a favor? What I want you to do is on the count of three, everybody shout, Welcome Patrick Rowland. All right? Let's see some beers in here. We're going to show a good example here. All right? There you go. On the count of three. All the way California, right? Let's hear him let's hear, hear us. On the count of three. One, two, three. Cheers. Cheers. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning on the funny farm. Hmm. Is that a new Elvis man? No, this is the Kate Scott Christmas. Oh, that's what she gave you. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can see. Did they change his color? Yeah. It's it when it's cold, like my heart, it just goes all black, and you can just see the Elvis lighting. Okay, so he's starting to warm. And then Elvis appears. Once, once the yeah. toasty beverage lets the cup know it's time to unveil the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, welcome everyone. Well, to, this is a great episode because we have uh, one Chris Steele joining us later, right. later on today when we get a, we'll get up and run it. Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, do you want to slap a number on this thing, or do, 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 have we already? No, we haven't. Actually. No, we haven't. Let's stop it. Episode number two hundred and eleven. You get slapped. You, you know slapped. what that rhymes with? No, Kevin. Two eleven, Kevin. I should have did that on two oh seven. Seven would have been better. Uh, yeah, yeah. She was thinking yeah. But it, r- rhythmically, you can make it work because you're, yeah. you know, you're essentially you're just 50 cent it. Just, you know how you write, you just make the words work, right? Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. An extra syllable. Just it throw in. it in there. Yeah. Already spent way too much time on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. So we have, yeah, we have the, uh, the always, the always wonderful, the, the, the serendipitous uh, Chris Steele joining us today. Talk about Patty's Day coming. And, uh, you know, the, the frolicking nature of uh, March 17th. I don't know, by the time this comes out, the Patreon people will hear it first, but... Thank you, Patreon. Um, uh, yeah, we might even have something to show you, if you know what I mean. Ladies. You'll get this Tuesday, and a uh, good time last time. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mighty Mendoza in, uh, in uh, Galveston. A wonderful time at Drunken Monkeys. Sam and all the crew was always putting on a great venue and a great... Uh, Great Fat Tuesday celebration, Mardi Gras parade, all that stuff. Good to see some old friends down there. That was a fun night. And uh, yeah, we, we're, uh, and then we're taking off. So this coming Friday, we're at the Continental Club with one Heidi Riggs. Finally comes back to Houston. And then Saturday, we're in Sherwood. We're doing the Trash Tribe. We're doing a, an animal rescue benefit. And uh, uh, Sunday, we're supposed to be in Arkansas. That date is falling through that um, our, our friends at Hibernia are going through some stuff. So we will not be there. So uh, keep an eye on that. It might end up being in Jackson, Mississippi if the strings get pulled and the pull, the pulling works. Yeah. So okay. might be a little, might be a little detour. Monday back in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, I want to thank uh, Gloria and Laura ahead of time for the, for their wonderful hospitality. Uh, I know them very, very well, and they're uh, taking good care of us in Birmingham, Alabama. And then we're off to uh, uh, Atlanta to uh, visit the Muckers, doing a show with them in Atlanta, Georgia, on uh, Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, we have a travel day, and uh, uh, Thursday, we are at the Irish Brigade, which is formerly Brogues. This is, uh, we're getting into da- Davy Bryan territory. Who's Davy Bryan? A uh, dear friend of ours who passed away a few months back, and uh, we're going to go to his hometown. Actually, it's not his hometown. It's his um, uh, f- final place that he was. And we're going to do so. Our friends, uh, <clears throat> Sean and Keith, helped us get back in touch with the new owners of the Irish Brigade in uh, Lake Worth, Florida, Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Celtic Conch, Key West. Sunday, Punta Gorda, back at the world-famous Celtic Ray. So I, I don't know if you got, I, I know we got Merch Maiden on a plane somewhere. We got her flying around. <laughs> she's circling ready for the flight. She just wants to go to the Florida gig. So she's up yonder spinning around and doing the, getting ready for, for Florida. So very excited. And then we come back for uh, for a couple of days, laundry and Patty's Day. We do Wednesday private party, Thursday Longview, Texas, back to the Lone Star. And then uh, Patty's Day, all day, all night. Big one. Yeah, O'Bannon's. Um, 
just can't get enough. Do, 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 do. And then uh, some Saturday, we're in downtown Houston. New place, new to us. Was it J, J now? J, J, B? J, J, B? Yeah, J bar, the M J barbecue, bar. yeah. J yeah. J so it's going to be, it's actually called S and M barbecue, which yes. essentially you don't eat the food. It, well, it, it, it's adults, you know, send the kids to bed. We'll tell you. Anyway, so any other news? How are we doing? Everybody happy? Yeah. Happy, healthy, hor- 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 yeah. Of course you. <laughs> all good. Yeah, all good. Yeah, we're working on a couple of new tours. I, don't, I haven't even told you guys yet. A couple of, couple of new tours. Yeah, we've got some uh, some Midwest stuff coming. We've got uh, uh, summertime in Philly, it looks like, and um, trying to get cool. trying to get back over to Arizona. And uh, it's going to be a lot of miles this, this year. So I'm... Uh, I'm ready. I'll just go fuck. I'll just go now. Why aren't we leaving now? I know. Because we got to make Practice. sure the gear still works. We got to rehearse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be, going to be fun. <laughs> Would you like to hear another one? <laughs> Is there anybody here that wants to hear some Irish rock and roll tonight? Well, then we've got a treat for you. Look at this. We are all here. The gang's all here with the master <laughs> Chris Steele, publican, beer maker, master, emperor, lord. What? What? How many, many titles do you have? <laughs> that probably covers it all. It's probably more than yeah. enough. <laughs> well, well, welcome. Good to have you. I like lord. That's awesome. <laughs> lord yeah. Steele. Yeah. Lord Steele. Actually, that sounds like a porn name. Do you have a do you have a, a fans a only fans account? No. Uh, well, only I only tell certain people about it. But. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's a only only fans. Okay, got you. Very How nice. do I sign up? <laughs> well, it's strictly for your audience. So I'll, I'll give the, the the link at the end of the of this episode. <laughs> Very cool. So, so for, for, for those of you watching, for those of you, uh, this is Chris Steele. He's the owner of Abandons. And um, we've we've spoken so fondly over the years of, of this place because of Chris Steele. And, of course, Steph, um, the, 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 the lovely Stephanie Steele, who uh, she, she, she likes the band. She hates me. So she never, you know, she can't come to a show. But she's, uh, no, she's, she, and she does all the, you know, behind the scenes stuff. And Chris is out there just go, yeah, it's mine. It's mine. I did it all, you know, but she's, uh, she uh, is, as <laughs> she's as wonderful and hardworking, but yeah, we've, we've, you know, we're huge O'Bannon's fans and we've actually been playing at O'Bannon's since not inception, but like really close to it. Correct. Pretty much. I mean, we opened, you know, in 2005 and I, it was probably within, I would say three or four months of opening that I, I called you that first time. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's. It, I don't know where the time went, but it does seem like it's been <laughs> almost seventeen years, probably. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And of course, you know, we've been explaining to Turbo, who joined us last August. You know, we've been explaining the enormity of it, and he got it the first. You know, the, the first time he walked in the building, goes, "Yeah, I know what you mean." You know, it's a. Yeah. It's it, it it's a true landmark, and it really has. You've built up, which I've said a thousand times. You 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 have built you brought good beer to College Station and you've trained those, uh, you've trained the, the 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 punters to ditch the Michelob Ultra Unicorn Light shit. You know you 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 know they come in there and they drink real real drinks. It's something to behold. So you're to be commended, young man. I appreciate it. That's uh, uh, as one. Uh uh, one of the, the tap room manager at the brewery calls it. Uh, somebody ordered an ultra at the brewery, and he's like, "Ah, yes, the bologna sandwich of beers." <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man! I would have stolen that. Yeah, yeah that is great. <laughs> that's cool, man. I would have thought that was like a cold, you know, moldy can of spam. I mean, that's that's awful. That's <laughs> gone. Patty, I want to say something. You you said the word landmark. You know, like you know, I did join in August, and I. I said that to you early on. I think it might have been the night we were leaving. I was like, man, this is not just a place. You know, for me, it, it was my first time there. So there's a lot of places you just come in and play, and they're very short. They're not even chapters. They're just – they're flashes, and they come in and out. But I was like, man, this is this is a, a family. This is this is special. I'm just so th- – so thank you, Chris. I'm just – I think it's great to be able to be part of that. Well, I, you know, I've always felt that uh, – you guys have been in, 
you know, an integral part of our success at O'Bannon's. You guys have played there so often. I mean, pretty much once a month, you know, give or take here and there, you guys are coming. And our, our fan, our, our, sorry, our fan base, our, our, your fan base, our customers, they, they come to O'Bannon's and you guys play. But, if you know, coming on four weeks, if you guys haven't been back, we start getting asked over and over. When are Blackers coming back? When are Blackers <laughs> coming back? And so, you know, we, we tell them the date. And, I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I think one time after a St. Patrick's Day, we had a really great one. And, and Patrick and I were texting uh, that night after it was over. And I think I remember, I, I think I texted you, Patrick, and I said, you know, you're part of the you know, major cogs that make this wheel turn. And I've, I've always felt like you guys were an integral part of our success and that we wouldn't be the pub that we are today without you guys being a major part of it. And I truly believe that. Wow. And that's, that's huge. Wow. That, that really is. And, and, and again, we're just, it, it, it it's, um, uh, there's, there, there are a few pubs, there are a few places that, that we can go into that we can have that what you, again, and, and I credit that to, you know, to, to your, to what you created there, because without, obviously without that, these, these, uh, these kids are not, and I hate to say kids, but you know this because you really do. You've got a, you've got an exceptional uh, cross section of society in there, you know, because there are people that are a little bit older than us, and then all the way down to you know essentially freshmen, you know, and uh, and yeah, and, but they 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 still they're not coming in and asking. for, you know, we'll get it for once in a while, but we, they're not coming in asking for top forty or they 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 get what we're doing because of the environment. So we have you yeah. know. Um, so, but I mean, obviously, we, we you know we step outside the Irish rock quite a lot, but we always kind of keep it to our our own. You know, it'll be our own version of of whatever. But we still don't get that. Hey, do you know any of that? Whatever it is, whatever the flavor of the day is. So again, mm-hmm. good. You know, great atmosphere. You know, great product. You know, with Giovanna's and and and, and again, let me commend your staff too because I I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. You know, these people are, and I know that you've had trouble getting, get, you know, keeping people in because your staff, you know, they graduate mm-hmm. and they, they, they leave, you know, but you always keep that high level of the door, start with, start with the door guys and the bar backs, they're smiling. And then you get to the bar and they're just, they're, they're knowledgeable. They're, they're quick, you know, cause that, you know, these, these kids, you know, the, the, the punters drink a lot and fast. So they yeah. keep it up, but they also keep, we, we've never, we, we don't see fights. We don't see, you know, you know, throw up. We don't see, you know, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a well-oiled machine. And it really, it, it, it means a lot that we can, you know, that we can come back, you know, and also I'll say too, you know, in, in the playing every month, I know that in the past we've actually called you up, <laughs> said, Hey, our gigs canceled. You're like, come on. You know, so it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's been, and you, you, yeah, you've definitely been one of the, you know, easily one of the top people that we've ever worked with. So all that said, that's why we're so, that's why we're on today is not only to talk about Blackwater Draw, where, where, where you're at right now, your brewery, but uh, we're just, uh, this is going to be, um, I think this is going to be just one of the best, uh, one of the biggest Patty's Days ever. And the reason why, why I wanted to do this one today is because you, I, I, again, in keeping with the O'Bannon State, you, 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 you don't do a cover on, on Patty's Day, which is unheard of. You know, the drinks don't go, you know, double just because it's Paddy's Day, which is, you know, right. I, I, you know, we, we played so many and it's embarrassing. It's, it's just embarrassing. You go in there and they're just they're just thieving. You're paying for parking. You're paying for, you know, babies, all the stuff that's behind the scenes. And then you get in there and they're trying to get you for 20 at the door. And, and you, but there's nothing new. You know, there's nothing, you know, so uh, the so. So anyway, I, I just want to talk about your George, just ask you, how did you, or you know, when did you decide that you wanted to block off the street, put a tent over the whole thing, and do do such a massive uh, event? Yeah. So the first year we were open, you know, we knew St. Patrick's Day was coming up, and we just had no idea how busy it would be. At that point, that first, you know, I would say we opened in July. It was almost a year we had been open, and we really hadn't you know, hit the ground running that side of Northgate when we opened up, uh, didn't have a lot of bars on it. Um, there, there had been bars there previously that had closed down. So we were kind of down there on our own and that, you know, 
they were like, oh, we got to walk all the way to the other side just to get to this one bar. So we really hadn't hit the ground running yet. Um, and and Steph, you know, my wife, you guys know her, but for the audience, don't know her. Stephanie, yeah. my wife, she was telling me, she's like, you don't know. You don't know what's about to happen. It's about to be really busy. And I, I didn't really believe her. And, and, and then it hit and we were, it was the busiest day we had had up until that point. And so, uh, the next year we were better prepared for it and we were even busier. And I want to say it was probably about that third or fourth year we started thinking, okay, this could be a really big thing. So then we went to the city and, uh, approached them with the idea, which I was actually laughed at. Uh, the fire marshal literally laughed at me on the phone. It was like, I'm not closing the street down for a party. And that made me mad. And I probably said a lot of colorful <laughs> words back. And, and then this went back and forth with me asking and them saying no for uh, this year will be our 13th year doing the street. So this went back and forth for wow. a couple of years. And then then we had a, a, a an association of bars, a Northgate Association. And the guy that was kind of helping manage that used to be a city councilman. So he actually helped me. You know, he greased the wheels in the right places, talked, you know, said, hey, this is a good thing and help uh, lay the groundwork to help us get it going. And then um, we've been fortunate that, you know, it's, it's gone off without a hitch every year. Like you said, we don't have any fights. We don't have, you know, there, there's there's places that have fights every day. And we've been open, you know, 17 years and never even had five fights. I mean, it's a really laid back place. And even on St. Patrick's Day, when it is packed to the gills of people, it's just really chill and everybody's looking to have fun and, and have a good time and, and, and no real issues. So it's, uh, um, that's kind of how I got started. And then we've just tried to make it bigger and better every year. Yeah. Mission accomplished, my friend mission accomplished. It's yeah. so, so, so let's, so, so let's go through it. The, the, are, are we doing the Guinness relay this year? What, what, what's, uh, what's on the, what's on tap pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, the night before, we have that countdown clock run into zero, and so we'll be do a big toast that night before. And then uh, on that day, we'll open up at, at 7 a.m. and then uh, get rolling. <laughs> Usually, we try to get the street open by 10 or 11, you know. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have the Guinness team. You know, those people will be there. I know pretty much every Irish whiskey is going to come do promos. You'll have Tullamardu, Jameson. Slain, Irish Whiskey, uh, Proper 12, all of them, they're all going to come and do their stuff uh, and be handing out stuff. And then we'll do the Guinness Relay. We'll do, um, of course, you guys will be there. Uh, so that's a, a big bonus. Um, Guinness Relay is pretty fun. I'm, it, that, man, some of these teams, they are fast. You know, okay, I think so O'Bannon's has only won it twice. Oh, I thought it was more than that. I think we've only won it maybe three times, but. Hi, O'Bannon's. Don't let me down, James. You're just leaving it off, right? Austin, Mark, don't let me down. Here we go. Wow. Okay. Explain what the what what the Guinness Relay is uh, for for the for the for the people that haven't had the joy. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, we actually saw it for the first time at that uh, that Irish stew cook off in uh, Houston. Oh. Yeah, and they, they were doing it there. That's kind of where we saw it. And we were like, oh, man, this is awesome. So we, we brought it, that idea to O'Bannon's. And so it's a uh, yeah, team of four. And you, you, you go down the line one, in, you know, one at a time and see how fast they can, they can down a Guinness. Yeah, pint. so we have, we have a stopwatch. ounce pint. Yeah, so we have four, four participants, and somebody with a stopwatch. And what you do is you, you have to drink the Guinness as fast as you can. And then to end it, You've got to hold it up over your head, so you do not want to leave any in there, right? Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, right. you know, so, so, so the pint glass is upside down, you know, top of your head. So if there, if if, if you're trying to cheat and leave it, you know, leave a, you know, but, but yeah, you, you're gonna have a little, uh, little Guinness hairdo or hair don't. So you know the rules. On your mark, get set, drink. And it really is. It's uh, it's something to be. Hold. I think Hoff was your uh, was your record holder in 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 in. <laughs> oh, he O'Bannon's. was our ringer. Let's <laughs> 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 fucking 
second fast man. 28-14, you're in second fast. He, he can drink faster than almost anybody I've ever seen. That guy, he just downs it so fast. But this, the team that's won, I think they're going on three years in a row now. They don't even live here anymore. And they come back for St. Patrick's Day just to do this relay to hold their <laughs> to hold their title, and they're still undefeated, man. These guys, it's crazy how fast they are. So not so not not only are they champions, but they're kind of smart too. They're coming to the greatest festival around. That's a <laughs> right. that, yeah. They, they 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 should get a prize for that, and maybe we'll uh, maybe we will assist in that. So um, it's been amazing how many people come from out of town. Like I, every year, there's people coming from Dallas, people coming from. You know, out Houston, Austin. Uh, there's a a uh, professor at AM East from Ireland, and he brought a bunch of his friends over last year uh, that came just to go to our St. Patrick's Day. So that was that was pretty. I was humbled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is is there any way to 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 keep the people from Dallas out? Is that possible, or would we we just have to let them in? <laughs> is that no? Okay, I'm I'm uh, always. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to. Th- I'm just trying to. Th- <laughs> That's a good response. Huh? Uh, I'm just trying. I'm, I'm trying. You know. I'm just. I'm just trying to keep the. You know. The clientele. I want. I want to keep that level up. You know. But if if they have to come, yeah, and, hey, at, at least we got somewhere to park our bikes, right? Lay them down. <laughs> okay. So, um, Patty, if you see uh, if you see Turbo's name signed up for that, just pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. So. <laughs> Um, let's for put the a relay. Mark. For the let's, relay. Yeah. Not yeah, doing the relay, but man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. you, you, can, you can jump on the O'Bannon team. Just, you know, uh, we'll yeah. may not make the final set. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll bring you on the payroll for uh, 20 minutes and you can be on our team. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and Impaler here would actually be a pretty good member of the team if if it was an eating contest. Nobody eats faster than this guy. <laughs> I'm saying, I did get it, pulled onto a team there once. Yeah. I can't remember what year that was, but I did participate in the, in the relay one and, time. And, and how'd you do? Not so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they really get into it. You, the, the teams that that they come back every year and and really try to compete, they get it down and they try to get the science behind it and they try to figure out a way to hold the the, the glass at a certain angle and they do their hands a certain way to to. It's crazy how they but. It, it works. They're they're, they're it, usually in the top three teams every time. Yeah, well, it, well, it's a big deal because we have the whole street and we have all that attention on that thing, and there's so much participation just in the crowd, and people are, are into it. Everybody wants that, you mm-hmm. know. They, they they have their favorites, and they all. But it really is it. I mean, it's something to to you. You got to witness it. You know, if not get in on it, it it's true. Um, just and for those who don't know, Hoff was one of the bartenders uh, uh, worked at O'Bannon's for for many many years. And um, yeah. but he as fast as the as fast as the liquid could exit the glass, he could he could consume it. It was gone. It was just it was it really was like it was a magic trick. You know, it's like you're looking around because he's not a big guy. You know, you're looking, you know, <laughs> above and below. Where'd that go? But yeah, <laughs> kind, kind of amazing. Um, and then what kind of food are we doing this year? Uh, we'll cater in breakfast, uh, and then we used to. Well, sometimes we still do it, but. Usually we cater in lunch, uh, but the last couple of years we've had uh, a food truck there just so they, it's just quick and easy and we don't have to worry about it so much. Yeah. So uh, probably Blackwater's food truck will be there yeah, again excellent. this year. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> That's yeah. the best. That is yeah. the best. Um, you know, we, we are there for a long, long time on, on, on Patty's Day and it's a, the beautiful thing is, you know, usually when you start, you know, when you do, um, when you do the first set, it's usually very quiet and subdued. They don't wait. They throw down immediately. It's, 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 it's on from the, from the get go. Come on. We're going to drag it out of you. I know you're shy. You're, you're unsure of yourself. You're unsure of it. We're going to bring it out of you tonight. We're going to have a little bit of a, let's do some Irish rock and roll. What do you think? I want to see some big college station smiles. And on the count of three, I want you to shout blackguards as loud as you can. Don't worry about changing your underwear. We'll do that tomorrow. Count of three, everybody shout blackguards. Are you ready? One, two, three. That's not bad. Remember, we're only getting warmed up.
T- so tell us more about the brewery. How, how's the uh, what's happening down there? Blackwater Draw, Bryan College it's, Station. Yeah, it's uh, we just got done doing uh, our busy season. You got football season. You got Renfest, Santa's Wonderland. We brew all the beer for them. So yeah, the fall is really our peak season. So we just got done with that, and um, now we're just uh, we just finished. Uh, we did a Mardi Gras crawfish boil this past uh, Saturday. That was a huge success. It was really busy for that, and then uh, we're just brewing. Just play around beers. I mean, we got our main beers that we do all the time, but we're just brewing stuff for the tap room and to throw a little bit, sprinkle a little bit of it around town. Uh, some kind of one-off fun beers to do, and we're uh, partnering with a uh, there's an axe throwing place in town, and they've got a tournament coming up. So we're talking about partnering with them. And this is pretty cool too. They actually want to come once a month and set up little uh, mobile axe lanes here at the brewery where people could come in. Yeah. Uh, and, and throw axes at the brewery. So we're, we're working the logistics of that out. So that'll be pretty fun. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, nothing and like what, drinking beer and throwing an axe, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> um, I, I think that's just common practice too. If you go to certain parts of Scotland, I think that's, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> but, um, uh, so what's your, what's your number one beer now? What's the, what's the biggest, what's the, what's your best seller? Hazy lady. Still? Yeah. That's our, our, uh, our, our it's, it's King. Yeah, that, that, wow. that beer is, is sells the, the most, is, and everybody loves it, you know. And even the people who, who don't like IPAs, which I totally get, they still like that beer because it's just so smooth going down. And, and uh, it's it's our number two seller at O'Bannon's, actually, too. Wow. So it's, uh, that, that, beer, that beer does really well. Wow. That's, that's uh, yeah, I, I thought there was going to be some kind of um, – is Weingart still in charge? Is he still the – yeah, yeah, he's still here. He's uh, running around here somewhere. Steph's actually here too. Steph started working more at the brewery, doing uh, uh, what's called cellar work and stuff. So she's uh, uh, taking readings on the beer and helping clean tanks and stuff, and and uh, wow. helping brew some beer. So she's that's she's cool. getting more involved now that the kids are in both in school and she has free time during the day. So well done, and, and making the place look better too. I imagine. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Very cool. Uh, Chad, hazy lady. Out of ten. Oh yeah. Ten. You no, I, me? <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Because Chris is listening. So yeah. That's right. So, oh hi. Yeah. Chris. <laughs> and we 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 we've got a we got a we're actually doing we did it a long time ago. We haven't done it in a while. The hazy lady, um, I mean it's it that's a big beer. It's like it's over eight percent alcohol, but it doesn't taste like it. That's why it's so dangerous. Like everybody right. loves it and drinks it down. So we're actually uh he, he, we brewed a beer uh yesterday that we haven't done in a long time, but it's called Hazy Baby. So it's uh, basically same beer, but just not half the alcohol. Half the alcohol so, content. Oh wow! Yeah. And Chris, what is what is the secret there? It always amazes me when I have a beer that's like you know eight nine percent or something, but it doesn't have that boozy kind of weight to it. What is? I mean, you don't have to give away your secret, but I'm just curious. Like, what? How to? Is that like a, a something you have to aim for? Like, okay, we're going to try to make this, you know, a lighter feeling beer, but still have the the, the high ABV. Yeah, part of that could do with the recipe, but the style of beer too. You know, I, I feel like usually um, when you're brewing a big Russian Imperial Stout that's you know 10, 11, 12 percent alcohol, there's just no way around it. You're probably going to yeah. taste the, yeah. that real boozy you know flavor right. to it. Um, uh, Hazy Lady, I think, also has so much uh, citra hops in it and that citrus flavor that it just it, it really mellows out that beer and you're getting yeah. such of that that citrus flavor that it just overpowers anything else you know that you would get out of it yeah i think what what do you attribute to uh the, just the, the long lasting popularity of ipas because i've heard some i've i've read some you know beer and you know just food people like being kind of derisive about ipas like going oh it's crazy you know they just make it Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. Everything well, has to be hoppy. It, it's funny because, you know, you talk to so many people that are like, I don't like IPAs. I don't like IPAs. But for for years and years uh, in the craft brewing sector, the, the number one selling skew at a grocery store was IPA. Mm-hmm. And that's why every single brewery has IPAs and, and multiple IPAs. Yeah. Because uh, they... For as many people that say they don't like them, it's still, I mean, our number one seller is an IPA. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'll be fair and say that, you know, we, we used to brew, uh, Timber Snake was our year-round IPA, and it was more of a West Coast style, so more hop forward, hoppy, what you would imagine as an IPA. 
and it was not our number one seller. I mean, I would say it was one of our slower sellers, actually. Um, mm-hmm. And then when we switched, uh, we brewed this Hazy Lady for that first time, and it sold so well, and we brewed it again, and then it just started taking off. And, you know, we could obviously see the signs, hey, this is a winner. So we switched that to be our year-round IPA. And, and like I said before, even people who don't like IPAs like that. And I think uh, yeah. probably as a category as a whole, even other breweries too, I think people who generally don't like IPAs would probably still like or at least tolerate more a hazy IPA mm-hmm. because they're just brewed to be less bitter. And right. uh, so that, that style of IPA has just skyrocketed, you know. Wow. Yeah. Um, but, but, I, but even before those became a thing, uh, mainstream thing, IPAs are still the best-selling skew for craft beer in the grocery stores. And, um, wow. you know, I, for as many, I, I can't explain it. I mean, for as many people that say they don't like them, they, they definitely sell. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a really old, like most beers, it's a really old style. The, the IPA, I mean, that's hundreds of years old, isn't it? I, uh, Even not the way uh, they're making it now. May, you know, maybe probably, yeah, hundred years, maybe you know. Yeah. Not the way they're making it now. Yeah, the way they're making it. Yeah. I think uh, Americans really revolutionized. I mean, we all Americans love bigger, stronger, bolder flavor. You know, so always, always making it bigger and bolder. Yeah. So the, the way they're making them now, I think, is more of an American thing that, that you know, we we led the the industry in. Right. But the style itself, yeah, it goes back probably to uh, I don't know the exact date, but I would say. Maybe early 1900s, maybe maybe 1800s. Okay, yeah. So, can you remember? <clears throat> this is my last IPA question. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember where you had? You, last time you were on the show, you talked about how you first fell in love with beer. Well, I think when oh, you I and Stephanie oh, yeah. were trying. Yep. When was the yep. first time you remember having an IPA? Uh, probably the first time I had an IPA. Probably when I opened O'Bannon's actually. Because oh really? I didn't. You know, I I. I, you know, went to college drinking Bud Light and I, uh, was actually managing, it was a shot bar. So we didn't even really have any beer there other than bottles of Bud Light and Shiner and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it was whenever I started dating Steph and then I had, uh, that German beer, Francis Connor. That's where I first realized there's other beer out there. And so right. that got me into beer and, and, you know, wheat beers and then stouts fell in love with Guinness. But mm-hmm. even then, you know, open O'Bannon's and I put all these beer taps in there. I didn't know, I didn't know crap about beer. You know, I just wanted to have a lot of taps and offer a lot of stuff. And then so, you know, you get all these taps and you know, what's this beer? What's this beer? I mean, I didn't even know shit about running a bar or anything, but I opened mm-hmm. one. And then uh, probably then is when I started first trying IPAs and I hated them. I hated <laughs> them. Yeah. It took me a long time. And, yeah. I, you know, even even now, I, I admit, I mean, I, there's not, I don't love every IPA I drink. I wouldn't call myself an IPA guy, but I will say that, uh, even not trying to be biased, the hazy ladies is one of the best beers I've ever had. I just, I love that beer. And, and I have to agree. it seems to be that a lot of people do too. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, uh, uh, the, the big bitter IPAs, they're still not really for me. So, so two questions, two burning questions. One, uh, where can where can people in the College Station, Houston, you know, Greater Texas area, where can we get where, where can they find your fine beer uh, for sale? Locally is really all that's available. There, there's some surrounding counties that it's in that our distributors go to, but that would probably be few and far between where you would actually find it. But you know, here you can get it in HEB, uh, Kroger. You can find it in some convenience stores. You can obviously buy it at the brewery. We can sell to go. Um, but we are uh, talking a little bit here and there with the distributor in Houston. We would like to get into Houston, so we're we're still kind of playing around with that with those guys, trying to figure out if it's going to be a deal that would be beneficial to both of us to to go with this distributor. So it's kind of you know it's, if you're going to make that decision to go with the distributor, it is a big decision because the way the beer laws work in Texas, you know it's. It's not a deal that is uh, easily broken. You know, the, the yeah. distributor holds all the keys yeah. once you once you hand over those rights. So yeah, that's a tricky one. That is tricky. Now the second question is O'Bannon's. Is it true that O'Bannon's is the number one Guinness? Are you number one 
in Texas? I, as far I, mean, I haven't, I have not heard any different in the last uh, year or so. But I know uh, going through 2022, we were still number one. I think we hit number one uh, right before COVID. I want to say it was like 2018 or 19. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I know we were still number one, but I, I, I haven't talked. I haven't asked even asked our Guinness rep in the last probably eight or nine months. So. Uh, well, I, I know I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be. We're, no. I feel like I'm ordering more Guinness than I ever. Yeah, so. yeah, it's true. Well, and again, you're 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 a credit to you and, and you know and your staff because I've never seen I've never seen a bad pint go out. I've never seen, you know, I mean, you've just they're, they're all trained. Turbo, I've been meaning to ask you too. So you you're obviously not familiar with Hazy Lady, correct? No. Okay, so what's your beer? What's your what's your go to? <laughs> My go to beer? Yeah. I'm, I like uh, Smittix. And so that's probably my go-to when okay. I can find it. And yeah. so I, I typically will get that, but uh, um, that's probably my, my go-to. Other than that, I, I don't drink too much beer, you know, here okay. and there. I just kind of drink yeah. whatever. Well, Patty's day, what we're going to do is we're going to put you on film. We're going to have you try hazy lady on film. We're going to put it on here. So slapper cast viewers, <laughs> We'll we'll see it for the first time because I'm I'm really curious because I know that you've uh, uh I, I mean if you know Turbo you know he's got high standards his uh he, he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't deal in shit you know he he's got you know he 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 wants the best of it so I I want to put that on we want to do a live we we'll, we'll do a live thing from Mobanans on it but also I want to do uh, uh on on so on Patty's Day March seventeenth Obanans seven a.m. They're going to be doing breakfast, and they're going to be pouring, and it's it's going to be it's just going to be uh, just. Whilst I predict that this will be record breaking, I, I I just I feel it. Uh, the the people that have been emailing us, and uh, I was really really cool to to uh, I, I got a I got a call from a, it wasn't it wasn't the person at, at the club, it was just they were kind of doing a favor for a club, and they were, they were calling us to. Uh, to uh, find out about Patty's Day, which is always a great thing to do in January and February of the year that you, you know, yeah, that, now's a good, now's a good time. I'm sure everybody's ready, but uh, I get a phone call and we're just talking. I go, no, we're we're at Obanans all the time, and you know that's that's our Patty's Day, blah blah. And it was like, oh fuck that, I'm going. <laughs> they were just like, no, 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 no more conversation. Oh yeah, fuck that, I'm going. And it was just, it, it, it was, it was just really cool. So. Um, no, but it's it's uh, it it really is a uh, turbo. I'm excited for you to see this because, uh, like I say, turbo. You know he's he's got this. Uh, you know everything that he likes is way up there. It's all top shelf. It's all stuff. So he's gonna be gonna be very at home out of Bannons on March 17th, 2023. This is gonna be just write write it down, kids. Do not miss it and come in from wherever you're yeah. wh- wherever you're listening to this from. You can you can make it. You've got time. It's uh it's uh yeah when you were explaining it i was like i'm gonna try this i was already thinking that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna do it we're yeah. gonna do a, a live taste test and if you spit it out boy uh, I was like, uh, <laughs> Done. yeah i just hope caden can I gotta play drums. sign up for the i gotta yeah. sign up for the relay <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's> going down <laughs> yeah yeah no joking oh i love it so uh so what are we missing That's Chris? Funny. um I don't. I don't know. What you got? Any other questions or anything? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I've got a thousand. I have a question for y'all. Do you guys ever? You know, we we our customer base, like you know, it's almost all college kids. So uh, they graduate, they move on back to Houston. You know, wherever they're moving to. Do you guys get a lot of those people after they graduate coming to shows and being like, oh, I used to watch you guys at O'Bannon's, and and then the follow up to that is, have you ever traveled out of state? And met an Aggie graduate that used to watch you over the years, oh, and yeah. then they're like, "Oh man, I'm so glad to see you!" And you know, Kansas all the time, you. yeah. At, Not only all over the country, but in Ireland too. They're everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That and, awesome. We've, we've actually played the war hymn and and uh, at least two different states other than Texas. Yeah, when we've been on the road because of because of running into Aggies out there. Yeah, well, yeah it's, it's great. And yeah. No, that's uh, it's not because of the Aggies. It's because of Chris Steele and Stephanie Steele that we played the war hymn. It was I, I remember the I remember yeah. the conversation. I remember the conversation we had at O'Bannon's. Uh, Chris and I were standing there talking, and he's going, "Man, do you know what would be great?" And 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 I'll, I'll preface it by people will come up to you. At every band will tell every band will tell you this, unless they use music stands, because then they're not a band. But 
every band will tell you that they'll <laughs> you're on stage playing and somebody comes up man if you play brown eyed girl right now the roof will come off this place it's going to be the, you know. <sighs> if that anyway but so i preface it by that but we're chris and i are talking as we usually do at the end of the night we're we're both kind of hanging onto the bar <sighs> you know um and 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 and, and, and Chris, and you, and you said to me, you said, you know, you guys should do a version of, of the war hymn. And we did it. And it was, it was kind of shaky at first because you don't know what to expect. And uh, uh, the, the, the first time that it gelled, the first time that we actually, you know, made it sound like, like our, you know, like our song, but, you know, but everybody knew what it was. And I think it might even be on tape, but we just having that whole room all those rows and, and behind the bar, your staff, everybody arm in arm. And I mean, Oh my God, goosebumps. Even now, just thinking about <laughs> it, it was, it was just insane. But, uh, but even, even better that, you know, to answer I, again, uh, answer your question even further, we've run into people that have, that are now happily married that met at O'Bannon's in, we met them in uh, Washington, yep. yeah, yep. Washington, DC. We met them in, in, uh, uh, uh uh, I mean, couples, people that met at your bar, we were playing and they're together and we meet them. It's just, yeah, Aggies everywhere. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Well, I, I was going to say, I remember when y'all were doing the Warham and but when Buckley was in the band and he wouldn't play it, he would just stand there. <laughs> he would turn his back to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know why, right? I remember there's one time. Yeah. Right. yeah. Why? Why? So, well, Chris, Chris went to UT, which is the mortal enemy of uh, College Station, even though they're not in the same conference anymore, right? Um, uh, well, they're coming. Are they, they're are coming. they coming back? 2024, they're joining that. Oh, okay, okay. They're coming they're, to the SEC. My favorite memory of that, Chris, is <laughs> one time Buckley was there, and you were you were on the edge of the stage by the bar, and Buckley had his back turned towards the audience, and again, I'm not going to participate. And you were right there, and you're doing the horns down, right, <laughs> right in his face when he's trying not to, to pay attention. It was, it was so great. Well, well, there's a reason why Chris Buckley turns his back to the audience when he plays, just because he's a, he, he's aroused, and he doesn't want he doesn't want any you know <laughs> you know because he's a it's a. I mean, it's not visible. I'm just saying it's just he's he, he's aroused. And he doesn't want. To, but yeah, it, it it's 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 so it's such a beautiful moment, and you know it can be one of those nights where everybody's tired and you know everybody's. But man, that midnight because we, we we do it at midnight um, when we play, and uh, uh, and it's funny. You know, all we need to you know, turbo just needs to go dun 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 dun, dun, dun and it doesn't matter what's happening. It's just you know eruption it's beautiful but I, I, again all this goes back to what you've built uh in college station you know uh first o'bannon's then blackwater brewing i mean just it's tremendous we're just we're, we're so giddy about this patty's day and you know it's we've been off for so long you know it feels like 10 years because of the you know because of being locked out and locked down and um now to 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 come back in 2023 March 17th and just just ignite this is I, I'm I'm so and, and of course this is our first time to get uh, Heidi Riggs on fiddle this is her first time yeah. playing so she was supposed to be here last month and uh, something came up in Phoenix and she couldn't make it but I think it's kind of better now that that we're that we're doing it like this because now we have a uh, you know we have we've just there's nothing nothing better than stepping in at the top floor you know. You know, you don't have to take the stairs. Mm -hmm. You're here, so yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I that's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. She's she's uh, she's she's very excited. But I'm just I'm more excited to see the you know the the welcome that she gets because Turbo's Turbo's earned it. Turbo Turbo came in and kind of helped build us back up to you know we 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 came in you know kind of shaky and um, we're just having more fun now. And we've never had this before what we have now on we were there you know last weekend and you know you, you've redesigned the stage a little bit and people are right up at the stage from song one and they don't leave so we're you know that's not that's not a coincidence and that's not because you know we smell really good that's because there's a there's an energy that's been <laughs> being created and we you know we're uh you know we're 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 
just excited. We're grateful. We're, we're looking forward to March 17th, 7 a.m., kids, 7 a.m. at O'Bannon's College Station, March 17th. Uh, I would just go to bed now and set your alarm for the 16th because you're going to need all that fucking energy. <laughs> oh, T-sip motherfucker. That's what you called him, wasn't it? Wasn't it a T-sip motherfucker? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I love it. Horns down. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I just, I remember, I remember, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I, I think it may have been when we were going to join the SEC or something. I don't know. I, I didn't work. Y'all played at O'Bannon's one night, and I probably had too much to drink. And I just remember <laughs> y'all actually drove me to my house, and then you dropped me off at my house, and then for like an hour after, I, this. I think I texted you a whole novel yes. just talking shit yeah. about Longhorns. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like reading that at 100 miles an hour at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know? <laughs> it's just amazing we're all just still here. song lyrics. Yeah. yeah. I, the, the thing I just remember too, Chris, I, I texted you when I found on high, in the Heights in Houston on 19th Street, there is or was a, a, a like a tea place called Tea Sips. <laughs> I saw it and immediately thought of you. I, I took a picture and texted it to you and you wrote back, so do they serve White Claw? <laughs> <laughs> So. nobody yeah, is that tough fun. there was like a long one time there was a, a longhorn network truck uh came into town and they, it was during the day and they parked right in front of o'bannon's and uh so i called chris weingard he's the, my partner here at the brewery uh we this was years ago we hadn't even opened the brewery yet uh, but he was working for a beer distributor and so i called him and i'm like hey man this is like longhorn truck parked out front so he ran to the uh, a book uh, aggie bookstore and bought all these like I love A and M bumper stickers and stuff, and we put them like all over that car. <laughs> They're like on the bumper, on the front hood. Like we put it like literally. I have a picture of it right on the front hood, and and they came back from lunch or whatever they were doing, and I was just kind of standing out by the front door, like looking at them, and and they all waved and like, oh, we're going to go. And I was like, hey, man. and they didn't even see them, and they got in their car and drove off. And I just I imagine them getting back to Austin, driving around with a Longhorn Network all over that car. And uh, uh, I love A&M stickers all over it. That's beautiful. Yeah, send, <laughs> send, send us a picture if you can find it. Send us that picture. Oh, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, please. That's I'll put it on, awesome. the, yeah. on the video. Yeah, please. Yeah. Now, listen, I know that we've uh, we've we've uh, kept you away. I know you've got your brewery to run. You've got the, t- you know, you've got the tap house. But um, uh, let's um, let's just uh, let's just keep pushing this thing. I, I, I really do. This is going to be, this is going to be the, this is going to be the one they're, they're going to talk about this. Grandkids are going to talk about this. It's going to be a big, awesome. big, big time, yeah. but you know, uh, you know, to yes, yeah, we really appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, taking the time. And of course we just can't say enough about you and O'Bannon's and Blackwater, man. Thank you for, you know, keeping us going. Yeah, man. No problem. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right. Cheers. 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 See you guys. Thank y'all. Yeah, See you soon. Thanks, Chris. See you very soon. What we're going to do is we're going to count to three, you're going to show us your alcohol, you're going to scream blackguards, and we're going to have a good time tonight, all right? On the count of three, blackguards, we're going to take your picture, want to see some alcohol, let's go. I think we gotta do that. Take a drink, everybody take a drink. All right, now turn to the lady to your left. Put your tongue in her ear. I want you to get into this, all right? It's okay if she has a beard. She's probably from Dallas. So you guys wanna kill a song? Is it, is it kill time? I think so. That's kill something. You going first? Yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> Bad to the Bone by George Sorgan. Good mm. kill. This guy does his homework, unlike Oh, I'm. That's that's a good one. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 just to 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 uh, to uh, put an extra bone in that one. Uh, George Thorogood is, is one of those guys. I I just never never liked any of his stuff. It, to, to me, it was always borderline mediocre. And and again, I hate saying borderline. that as a, as a player because <laughs> it just it, it just felt like there was there was it was just that 
I got a little change in my pocket. Yeah. Going to, just that, that man, if you had to just, just held off on two more minutes and just put a little bit of extra time into that song, it could have been so all those songs just felt like they just could have been just a little bit more, you know, yeah. punch, a little something else mm-hmm. to it. Like we were working on today before Chad got here. That thing, if we, if, you know, we, we didn't say, hey, let's record that, make us, you know what I mean? Put a little extra into it, you know, put some. So George Thurgood, not, not to, to, you know, just to maybe, maybe just to illuminate that, that, uh, that kill, um, highlight that kill is, uh, it's like, again, meatloaf was, uh, was another example for me. He, his, his, you can't, you can't deny his passion, but it was always just like, just borderline good, you know, or right below good or okay. It's just right under there all the time. It just seemed like, anyway, so I, I think that's a really yeah. good kill. Well, I, yeah, it's an example. I mean, I don't know much about him. But it always shows me how he's the really sort of forced, sort of sort of badass voice he's trying to do on it. Like he's he's, he's trying to be Andrew Dice Clay. Well, you know, all these guys learned their stuff from the from the real original blues guys. Who yeah, could actually sing in those probably dark voices. You know, deep dark voices, which he did doesn't really have. He's pretending. To, to yeah, it, it, it again. It sounds it sounds forced yeah. to me. One I was thinking of too is I was trying to think of something on the way up here, and I turned on the radio, and the first thing I heard was I don't even know who it is. I was going to look it up. The there's a man down there, it might be your man. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. No. Wow. Good for you. Maybe it's- <laughs> most stuff we talk about doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. Just well, so you're you know. you're you're like a hundred years younger than we are. So <laughs> so you know a, a lot of that stuff uh, is one of the most overplayed blues rock songs. Whatever the hell it's called, I don't know if it's the Almond Brothers or. Oh, yeah, not an Almond Brothers. Right. So, so give us a let, let's shine a little light. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I was gonna place that with a, a blues song, which is actually kind of nice, even though it's repetitive. But it's it's Harry Nelson singing it, so he's doing some of his vocal gymnastics on it, which is really really cool. It's called uh, it's a, I don't think he wrote it. It's early in the morning, uh, and it's just him. It's on his. Alvin Nelson, Nelson Smilson. Um, and it's just him on a, at a, like an electric rose piano. Uh, and he just sings a song by himself with no, no accompaniment. And, but it's, it's the song itself is not really that remarkable. It's the way he sings it. That's incredible. And he does some, some playful things. Like he will repeat, you know, uh, early in the morning, he'll sing it like, he sings it like 10 times in a row. And then, uh, he ain't got, Ain't got nothing but they ain't got nothing but they ain't got nothing but you. You're looking at your watch going, wow, how many times is he going to do that? But it just, it, the way he does it is so catchy and, and, and uh, hypnotic in a way. So, 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 so you think in, in, in uh, listening to that, yeah, Harry could have taught George a couple of things. Harry, well, Harry is brilliant in a lot of ways, but his singing voice really was his magic superpower. That nobody else. He had like no. I understand that, but I'm just saying four octave range. Yeah, I I don't know what what he could have taught George Thurgood, but it's it's uh, you know Harry wasn't a blues singer. You know he was he was pop singer. But but Harry Harry is a natural to me. Uh, George is one of those forced forced guys. You know, right? Like a meatloaf. Yeah. Um, But I guess uh, Harry, and especially on Nelson Schmelson, there is a lot of bluesy stuff on there. Actually, I don't know. I mean, Harry just. Knows how to f- how to fucking sing. Um, you can't you can't really touch him. I don't know. I don't know what you. I don't. I mean, I don't know enough about George's. I only know that song, that one song that George. Yeah, well, you, you, yeah. You, you know a few of them, but they're all in that vein. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I can't, I'm drawing a blank on all of them right now. But we could name ten, given the you know, g- g- given given a moment. Well, and, and I think that he was, he was huge on the MTV circuit. That's why I knew him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. always as fucking as as anticlimactic as the song that <laughs> that he played before. So. Well, I, th- I think that I mean, what all blues people should go listen to is is R- Rory, because he he is renowned as a blues guitar player and singer and songwriter and all that stuff. But he didn't just the thing that makes his stuff so good and just just that he was just great no matter what he everything he touched was great, but. He was. He wasn't just limiting himself to blues progressions and stuff. He did yeah. a lot of strange, a lot of really cool chord voices. That's actually one of the songs chord progressions and stuff. He's very good. Yeah. Anyways, we, yeah. Okay. Cool. So we talked about it. he. He actually 
contributed a lot without intending to contributed quite a bit to metal and, mm. and hard rock the stuff that came after him that the moon that the moon child song we've talked about a lot oh yeah was that real oh, oh, without a doubt i'm just uh listening to a uh brian may interview brian may of queen fame brian may credits his sound today to rory Gallagher. he said uh you know he he, he knew rory back in the day and would go to see him all the time and he said what's your what's your setup and he told me you know, it's the ac30 and it's the 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 high end you know that that uh that that high boost thing the pedal i mean and he said and i took it i went home and i got it and that's what i use today brian may queen rory Gall- i mean and he would go and watch rory just the thing i love about rory gallagher is, well, the many things i love about rory gallagher is every guitar solo is for the song fits the song and doesn't step in and out i mean can it can but it's so original to that moment um, and I, it, I'm going to go next just because I'm going to just piggyback on that. So I'm going to start with resurrecting the song. And it is Rory Gallagher. It's a, a woman of the bayou or it, it's the song of the bayou. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of folky, but it's still classic Rory. Great delivery. Such a, um, it, 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 to, me, it, to me, it has this kind of mamas and papas kind of feel to it. Doesn't fit into the quote unquote blues genre. However, it's got that. It's got, it's all Rory, you know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, second you, you put the needle to the vinyl, that it's, that's Rory, but, um, just classic, it's just a timeless, uh, format for the song. And it's just so beautifully delivered. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great. It's, I was just listening to that one and Philby, uh, his song, Philby, just back to back in the car just, oh. Anyway, so that, that, that's the, uh, the last shine of light on. The song I'm going to kill, I do not know the name of. I heard it and I hated it so much in order to preserve my freedom and the building I was in, you know, that I wanted to torch it and kill everybody in it. Uh, the song, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's one of those 80s songs, but the chorus is just baby. That's just the way it is, baby. It reminds me of oh, Bruce Hornsby. Yeah. Was that Bruce Hornsby? Yeah. That's fucking awful, and I hate that other it's one. Just the way it is. Yes. So that, is that Bruce Hornsby? Yeah. God, that's awful. <laughs> God, that's awful. And I was hoping that Wait, you would know. Baby, that's just the way it is. Oh, no. oh no! Wait, I'm sorry. That, Jeez, no, I'm, I'll see. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just the way it is. That's, that's a different thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah what God. is that, baby? Oh, it's fucking awful. No, what is that? That's a more recent thought to me. Yeah, that is terrible. It's like the cock suck twin, the cock two twins. The uh, no, that's not. Uh, you don't like twins? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's the deal, man? <laughs> uh, no, um, uh, yeah, but uh, that's that's what I, I was hoping that you would know the name of. The, it's awful, uh, but I was in a store and I heard it, and I was like, God, I'm gonna, I'm, I, you know, I just looked around, and everybody unconsciously had the same look on their face, like, oh, <laughs> it was one of those things that you know, just for that moment in time. Everyone's like, manslaughter is completely legal. You know, <laughs> <laughs> everything is, you know, nothing. Like, oh, but it, it, it's awful. Kids don't even look it up. But that, that's, that's the chorus here, baby. That's just the way it is, baby. And it's just, and it never goes anywhere. It just kind of sits in that, that one dick nerve stomping, you know, <laughs> just, just fucking, oh, it's awful. It's just it nothing to it. Yeah. Lifeless. Good, good call. Yes. Awful fucking play. <laughs> it's Bruce Hornsby. Oh, I don't even know if Bruce Hornsby is still around. I, I I I detest Bruce Hornsby only because that song just just the way it is. I was another one of those songs where just kind of hey, let's get it something like nice and monotone and not move off the thing and just ah, the production on the record was good. Yeah, you know it's isn't there but, a drum machine drum machine on that track? I I I, yeah. I I hope so because uh, <laughs> it just it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. Anyway, let's Bruce liven Hornsby. it up. What you got? You're going to kill? Is there another kill? Bruce Hornsby song you don't like? Many. Many. Uh, Which that's one? That's the only one I can think of. That's the only one. The, the, the I just want to kill another one. Just yeah, like, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. this is where uh, we just go one, two. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I need another title. I, I just can't think of any that's, it's, that's Well, we're titleless so right now, so if there's any um, other ones. What about, uh, what about, uh, uh, God. Like a good Michael McDonald, maybe? Or, or, or uh, what's his name? Michael Bolton? Michael Bolton. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, what, what's Is he his? still around? Yeah, oh yeah. Like playing? Uh, I, he hasn't called me, but I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's still here. Why do I want to Google that? Yeah. 
Is he still around? Yeah. He can't. He's, he's yeah, still he's a, he's a young kid. I mean, he's, a, you know, he's, he's in his 70s and yeah. 60s. Yeah, so I'm sure. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, uh, I do have a song to resurrect, though. Huh? I do have a song to resurrect. Start there. You know, like the, uh, you know, No Effects is doing that final tour. And so I'm like, oh, man, I'm pulling out all these old records and songs and stuff and that I used to listen to. And there's, I know, I, I think I've resurrected this band Pulley before. Who? Pulley, yeah. Pulley. Yeah, just, definitely. man, I just, I pulled out their self-titled album and I just, I just love this band. It's just so good. I just, there's a song called Working Class War. I swear, I read the lyrics. I'm like, this is who I am. I'm like, it's just everything in this song. I'm like, yeah. I just, I highly recommend to check it out. Pretty cool. Punk rock, 90s punk rock, but awesome band. Very cool. So, yeah, I'm like, man, I need to find an old shirt. Who's selling an old shirt from the self-titled album? Because I want to get my hands on it. But they're still playing. So. Yeah. And you saw these guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played a show with them one time. Yeah. In Arizona a long time ago. And, uh, in Havasu? No, in Phoenix. Phoenix? Yeah, at the Nile Theater. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. And, um, and then that's, I remember we gave the guy in the band, uh, Jim, and he was, we gave him our demo and we're like, help us out, help us out. And so he, he ended up calling us and we went to California, worked with him for years. And, uh, but, uh, that was kind of the start of that relationship. We were, oh, which band was this? He was in Pulley. He was playing. No, guitar. which band were you in? Uh, this was Pummel. Pummel. Okay. Yeah, this was Pummel. This was early Pummel. I remember we were, this one we were more of the punk rock version of the band. Yeah. And then I remember the first time we were at his studio, he said, uh, he, he goes, hey, I want to talk to the twins for a minute. And so he was like, I just want you to know I'm going to kick every member out of this band, except for you two. And we were like, what? You know, and my brother's like, ah, man, these are our buddies. And he's like, I'm just going to tell you right now, one by one, I'm going to get them out of here. Sure enough, that's what he did. One by one, they just... This guy's gone. Did this he kill them or fire them? He just fired them. He fired, was like, okay. you got to get rid of them. He was like, in the meantime, I want you two to go find a singer. And uh, anyway, that's, I know I'm kind of taking off here, but no, that's, uh, that's I just, man, I love this band. It's just, they're so good. Yeah. It's so good. So I want to see them again live. Yeah. Because they were kind of a band where they were all in other bands. Yeah. And then they formed, you know, they would come together because the singer, Sky, he was a professional baseball player. And so he was gone all the time. He could only play in this short window. What was his name? Scott Rodinsky. I think he still coaches or he's like a, you know, like a pitching coach or yeah. something. I'm not sure now, but you know, he's, and then, so they, all these guys kind of had their own bands and then they would come together and yeah. play in this small window that he could play and then back out to their other bands. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to kill us all still, right? We're doing, you got another, no Bruce Hornsby. I can't piggyback off that. Uh, <laughs> I try to just piggyback right off that one and let that one skate uh, through. I don't, I, I'd be, uh, I don't know if I'd even admit to knowing another one. I don't, that's for sure. I'm surprised Chad doesn't know. He's like an encyclopedia. Let's kill it. Yeah, he does. He does. Kill, uh, kill. You want me to kill the Paul McCartney song? No, kill, kill, kill a song. I'll always kill a Paul McCartney. <laughs> Which you want to kill? Kill a song off our set. <laughs> kill a song off I'll our set. Off our set list? Yeah. Oh man. First one that comes to mind. Kill it. the first song I killed it. was Paul and Chain. Oh, I don't know. We started doing this. Paul and Chain? Yeah. I like that one. All right, kill another one. Just, just uh, I don't know. Yeah, first one comes to mind. Kills Rock and Sailor. <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> That's Stacy's. Though. You better not. I better not. Yeah. No, oh, man. I love. I'm gonna kill Big Strong Man. Wow, right. That's one, that's one of my favorites. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. But because I've missed that pause where we twice in a row, because I'm like. When did we not do these double hits? And so I was like, the last show, I'm like, I'm not going to miss it. Sure enough, I miss it. And I look over, I see Chad's laughing. He's looking back at me. I'm like, damn it, I missed it again. I was like, so it's on my list today. I'm like, we got to run through that. Uh, kill so, it. Oh, the, 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 the big motherfucker part? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you kind of pause and then you're not really. All right. You just have to listen to what word he says. He yeah. Says, I'm like, what's he doing? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Anyway, I don't really want to kill it, but. Kill it. Yeah. Uh, Chad, tell us. Temporary. Yeah. Nah, I didn't even want to kill it. I just, you just I'm going to say gonna, that. You're just going to fucking tase it, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's got the electric call around me if I don't yeah, do yeah. it. Right, Chad, Chad, kill us all up the sentence. Uh, what else could I kill? First one, go, go, go. Jeez. It is hard for me because I, I do actually enjoy most of the stuff that we do. Um, if not all of it. All right, I'm going to kill Dirty Old Town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill that. Uh, I'm also going to kill a Spanish lady. Oh!
I'm gonna kill. Uh, I should have done that one. I'm gonna kill. Yeah. Damn it, that was. A uh, but but I can play better. today. Today. Call your girl. Call my girl. It's good. Oh, good, like good that. Um, but today we're gonna actually figure out. We're gonna change some stuff. We're gonna send it to uh, Young Heidi Riggs. Gonna. Uh, do you bring the computer? Yeah. Yeah. We'll. Uh, we're gonna put some stuff down today. Kids, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get to work. But let let me just tell you from. Uh, from Turbo, from Impaler, from myself, and from Heidi, from afar. We're going to, uh, uh, I, I need you to, uh, I need you to come see us. We've got a lot of new stuff coming. We're gonna uh, put some, we're gonna put some, uh, some uh, changes, some changes to some of the songs, and we're gonna see if you like it. This Friday, Continental Club. If you cannot make it, if you cannot attend, uh, you know, we just really appreciate it. if you could just uh, help us spread the word. Send it out. Hit subscribe on here while you're here. Why don't you? And then, um, and also, uh, we want to also congratulate uh, um, uh, Larry for 60 shows in a row. Uh, sure. And uh, yeah, that's that's impressive. It's it's been every show, uh, every Texas show, except the one that we did at the, uh, the the straight bar. He didn't show up for that. Somebody's weird. But uh, yeah. him and I talked about that. I said, just so you know, I'm going to be passing you soon. He's like, you can't pass me to come to every show. I go, not the out-of-town ones. I just slowly am uh, creeping up. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> that's right. So I'm coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> we both laughed. It was pretty good. It's so funny because I never, I, I so rarely ever think about the numbers. To think it's, even just imagining us playing 60 shows, is like, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Patrick and I are well over the thousands already. I mean, literally. So yeah. it's, 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 uh, numbers are funny. <laughs> yeah, right. That makes any sense. They're, they're fundamental. The f- oh, all right. Let's uh, let's get to sweat. All right. We're we're going to we're going to be on the road very very soon. We're going to be um, uh, we're going to be taking you with us on the road. We're going to have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, wherever we can. We're going to try to do some live streams, um, just because we want to uh, mm-hmm. we want to show you some of these places. Uh, I think Key West weekend after next is going to be it, it, it's a rooftop bar in the keys we're going to do a sunset show it's going to be uh, friday saturday i just really i i um just, you know like i say hit subscribe and uh uh you know join us tell your friends if you know anybody in florida let them know we're coming it's going to be uh we're doing a big u-turn we're going down the east coast and coming back up the west coast and Coming back ready for uh, ready for Patty's day. So Heidi Riggs is, is uh, packing her bags right now. She's uh, rosling up the bow and getting ready for some some uh, you know terror Texas touring and beating beating up the you know we're gonna skate along the bottom and it's just very very excited. We we got a lot of good stuff coming and uh, um, hopefully we get some some good footage from the road because I want to of course bring it back to our. Maybe yeah. even get a surprise visit from Stacy out there. She was talking on the way out today. She said, well, I like go out there. Style. I'm like, fly out there. Yeah. I'll fly out there. Yeah. She, she might drop in. She was looking at it on my left. I'm like, oh, I know what that means. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I go get so, it uh, and, and uh, any, um, we, you, you put a link to your to your podcast on there? Prodigious Saps, yes. Put a link to there and you're, you're not doing yours right now. No, right? yeah. We've just been recording. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Good. So let's uh let's do it. Thank you all. Thank you Patreon. Thank you uh, you know. Th- thanks everybody for coming to the shows and letting your friends know we're coming. Indeed. Cheers. All right. Thanks to you. Thanks to our video that we sent out there. He's now drinking. Yeah! One years old, drinking. He's doing heroin. Yeah! And today, on his first birthday, he had his first prostitute. Thank you very much. It's not that impressive, he was done like in three minutes, so it's not that impressive.